Hello. Welcome to another live. I'm Colleen. So happy to have you join me tonight. I pray you hear me. I'm connected to my microphone. And tonight we're going to be talking about the setbacks of overweighing yourself. Weighing yourself too often on your weight loss journey, especially while alternate day fasting, is not productive. It's self-sabotaging and it'll actually deter you from progressing. So if you feel like you are weighing yourself a bit too often and not seeing the results that you desire, it is within your best interest to take a step back because overweighing yourself is just the way to derail what could be good progress towards your goal weight. So I'm going to wait a little bit to see if anyone comes in. I hope I have some members come in tonight. Also, don't forget that the alternate day fasting room on Facebook is always active. Head there to congregate, share tips, tricks, hacks, motivation, inspiration, um, answer questions amongst each other. That is always a joy. Let me make sure of that because I usually I at least have one person on this. Let me make sure like I'm in the right. Okay. And also don't forget. Hi, Annie. So happy to see you tonight. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the chat. You're our first person here. And I had the intro overweighing ourselves. It's it's a double-edged sword because I remember when I first started alternate day fasting. Happy to have you here. Um, I remember when I first started alternate day fasting, I weighed myself religiously every week, every Friday, first thing, or every fasted end of the week. So whenever I was fasted, and it was the end of the week, whether it was a Friday or a Saturday, that's when I was weighing myself. And hi, Ankita, welcome. Happy to have you. Um, stepping on the scale was a joy, but it was also anxiety ridden because what if, what if we don't see the number that we desire to see? What happens when all your your perfect fasting days and well-off feasting days equated to little to no weight loss for the week. What does that make you? Does that make you a failure? Does that make you broken? Does that mean alternate day fasting doesn't work for you? Every time I got on the scale, week after week, alternate day fasting, I, I luckily, for me, I lost weight. But the anxiety that came with the number, what the number said, I realized wasn't worth it because I had other things in mind that I was looking to fix but through weight loss. When it comes to weight loss, we all have this magical number in mind. This number that we created from either a dream or what we think would look best on us, what we think is, is fit and skinny and attractive, okay? We created this number. And as women, <clears throat> Most of our lives is dedicated to hitting, staying, and rem like all lifelong this number. The thing is, the number is just a number. 
the number is not reflective of anything else. It's not a reflection of who you are in character. It's not a reflection of who you are as a loving person, a mom, a daughter, a a partner. It doesn't indicate your abilities, your skills, that you're what you're worth, your value. But all of these things, everything seems to be out of reach until you hit this made up imaginary number. What if, say you hit the number, my number, my imaginary number, which I just, my magic number, which now is like, but it's 175. 175 is my like, I'm good there. Even 170. 170 sounds really good. I've been 170 before. I've been 170 before. Back in my early 20s. And I didn't even know when I got there because I wasn't weighing myself. One day I walked into GNC, popped a quarter into their scale, and I I realized I was 171. Here's the thing, though. I looked in the mirror and I, I wasn't, I still wasn't happy. I was, I was at the number and I still wasn't happy. The number on a scale means nothing. You can hit the number and it will mean nothing if you don't like what you see in the mirror, if you don't feel good, if you haven't improved your emotional relationship with food. If you, you have to love yourself first or the number will never matter. The number is an excuse in my eyes. The number is an excuse to uh, reach some imaginary happiness that's always just in the horizon, never quite reachable, but always on the horizon because you could get to 170. Okay, let's hit 165. You hit 165. Let's go to 160. When does it stop? When are we comfortable until people say, hey, you look, you look sick? Hey, are you okay? Are, are we fearing food at this number? Are, are we doing the inner work before we start striving for this number? And that's why I personally hate it when people overweigh themselves. It's, it's okay to track your progress. It's healthy to track your progress. Everyone in every arena, every sector of life should be tracking their progress. You get report cards in school. You get your stats on on a track, track meet. Okay, everything is judged and numbered and, and tracked for progress. And of course, weight loss. Scales, scales are a huge company, okay? Scales make money <laughs> because everybody wants to see how well they're doing or how poorly they're doing. It's okay. It's normal. But focusing too much on the number is going to hinder your progress, all right? So with that intro in mind, let's talk about alternate day fasting, and why the scale should be used very sparingly when alternate day fasting, okay? So I'm going to give you this quote that I love to use that I got from Jen Stevens, the author of Feast, Fast, Repeat, okay? The, the, The quote goes as such. Alternate day fasting is a health plan with weight loss as a side effect. Now let's let's listen to this again. Let's process let's process this because for one if you haven't read Feast Fast Repeat or Delay Don't Deny, I highly recommend these books. Not because it is the bible of intermittent fasting, not because Jen Stevens is the master of intermittent fasting, because She does something that I really appreciate, which is bring logic and science to weight loss. 
And I find when we find scientific research and backings to these claims, we're better able to stick to it rather than think of it as some imaginary happenstance, right? She brings a lot of logic to weight loss. And when you have a logical view of weight loss, you're able to better control and comprehend how you move in your alternate day fasting journey. And I highly recommend. Jen Stevens said alternate intermittent fasting, but I, I'm putting alternate day fasting. Alternate day fasting is a health plan, not a weight loss plan, a health plan with weight loss as a side effect. All right. So let's break that down. It's a health plan. When you start alternate day fasting, and in previous videos, previous lives, previous anything, I always tell you, you have to know your why. Your why could be as deep as you like. Your why could be as shallow as you like. It could be outside of you. It could be inside of you. But it has to be strong. My why was because I was experiencing inflammation in my legs. And my why was because I had reached, I had ballooned up to 252 pounds and no longer felt attractive, no longer felt womanly, no longer felt desirable. And that really ate away at my self-esteem. Okay. So my why was health, per, health focused and vanity wise, aesthetically. Know your why. Your why is going to ground you in your alternate day fasting journey. So it is a health plan. When you go into this, how can you improve yourself outside of looking good? Annie and Kita, can you please, if you can type, let me know one health benefit that you would get out of losing weight, whether it's alternate day fasting or not. One health benefit that you would acquire from losing weight. Tell me one. Okay, if you're able to, to write in the chat, I would love to know. And think about when you have that in mind, think about how it would improve your life. What would be better? What would be easier? Could you run faster? Could you play longer? Could you run up steps? Can you um, have more energy? Can you say no to finishing an entire plate? One health benefit. And think about how good it would feel to have control over that, to improve, to uh, remove medications from your life, to lower your high cholesterol and or your blood pressure. How would that feel? Balanced hormones, knees hurt less. That's wonderful. Hi, Lamique. Welcome. <laughs> I see you sneaking in. Um, balanced hormones is a great one, Annie. That's, that's a really good one. So, okay. So you said balanced hormones. What is the negative consequences from having unbalanced hormones? And if you did fix it with fasting, how much would your life improve? And now mind you, all of these things have nothing to do with how you look. It has nothing, it has nothing to do with how you look in a bikini, how you look in the dress, if a man is attracted to you. All of these things are just gonna improve your well-being, your quality of life, how others interact with you. Imagine how improved your mood would be that's a part of balanced hormones, having improved mood, which women are very affected by mood. 
and it has a lot to do with your hormones. I love that you mentioned that, Annie, because hormones isn't mentioned very much from me because I don't even think about that. But that is a lot of women with PCOS um, fast. They fast and they find so much benefit from it. It is a health plan. Poor sleep, low energy, inflamed body. So many people are walking around inflamed. Joints hurting, knees, hands can barely bend. Oh, I got eyeshadow on me. <laughs> I'm not bruised, y'all, I promise. <laughs> um, low energy is a big one. We are using caffeine to live life, okay? And that's not how we're meant to be. We're not meant to use drugs or outside additives to exist, to wake up in the morning. That's not how it should be. There's so many benefits outside of how my genes fit that we should be looking to and having as a foundation for weight loss other than how we look. There's so many benefits. And so with that being said, Alternate day fasting is a health plan with weight loss as a benefit. What that part means that I see a lot in the comments and a lot of people comment on weight loss, the weight loss, the weight loss. I weighed myself. I didn't lose weight. I didn't lose. You're not promised weight loss. You are not promised weight loss. For me, weight loss was truly inevitable. But here's the thing. You are not promised weight loss while alternate day fasting. You will, if you are a true alternate day faster, right? You will, I promise you will lose fat, lose inches, decrease inflammation, regulate blood. Sh- I pro- these things will happen, okay? Weight loss is not one of them. Weight loss is not one of them. You know, I got a comment the other day. and She pretty much answered her own question. She said, um, you know, I started alternate day fasting and I'd lost like, you know, 15 pounds or whatever. And then I started strength training. And I noticed my weight went back up. And I guess it's the weight, the strength training. She pretty much answered her own question. That's to show you how, um, what's the word? How much flux our weight experiences. We can step on a scale literally minute to minute, minute and get two different readings. You can step on a scale five minutes apart and get two different readings. I don't like using the scale as an indicator, all right? And you will, I personally, I personally lost weight, lost over 65 pounds, all right? I guess. Right now I'm not fasting, so I I got about like seven, 10 pounds back. <laughs> but you have it's not just about fasting, you also have to improve your relationship with food. Lifelong struggle, especially if you have had a poor relationship with food since childhood, which a lot of us we experience childhood trauma. And trauma doesn't have to be sexual abuse. It doesn't always have to be um, something, you know, something really deep. Someone died or you watched something horrific. It doesn't always have to be. Trauma could be as small as you were a latchkey kid, which means you came home to an empty house, you locked the door, and you stayed home by yourself until a parent showed up. It could be um, just small things could be classified as trauma. It's just things that shape your childhood negatively, all right? We develop coping mechanisms around food. I did. I remember having a bowl of cornflakes as big as I could find a bowl, 
all the sugar, all the milk, all the cornflakes. And I ate until I was a latchkey kid. My, my father or mom came home and then I was good to go to sleep. All these things affect how you look at, respond to, and emote around food. Okay. So don't think, don't beat yourself up. These are normal things. You're using this protocol, this method, this means of weight loss to correct your relationship with food. It's going to take time. It takes time, just like weight loss. Weight loss, when you see these people losing 20 pounds in four weeks, what do you really think is going to happen to them? 20 pounds in four weeks is not normal. It's not normal. I will never think it's normal. It's not long-term. It's not healthy. And as fast as it came off, it could come right back on. And that's why I like the slow and steady method. I appreciate alternate day fasting because of that. People expect to lose five to 10 pounds every week. That's not so. That's little do they know that's unrealistic. They swear up and down that this is a get skinny quick scheme. It's no scheme. It's a health plan with weight loss as a side effect. Okay. So <clears throat> Let's get into the notes. Weighing yourself too often can have negative effects, <clears throat> excuse me, on your mental and physical health. Here's why. One, it could lead to obsession. Constantly checking your weight can lead to an unhealthy obsession with the number on the scale. This can cause anxiety, stress, and it can negatively impact your mental health. I can't imagine a woman that has stepped on this scale and has not felt some kind of anxiousness around what number is going to pop up. My rule of thumb, my rule of thumb for successfully stepping onto a scale is if I know I haven't been doing what I needed to do, and I know this scale is probably not going to tell me something I'm interested in hearing or seeing, I will not weigh myself. Now, that can seem avoidant. It could be. But if you are fitting your pants, the number is okay. You don't need to check. All right. I know there's been anxiety at the doctor's office. You gotta step on that scale. You'd be taking off the socks. If you could take off the everything, you would. The more naked, the better. I guess the ounces matter. The ounces matter. But um, I, I can't imagine one person that has not had a bit of fear getting onto the scale. So with that being said, I can't understand for the life of me why people would inflict daily anxiety and stress by stepping on the scale every morning? Every morning? Why would you do that? Every other day? Heck, every week was just too much for me. After a while, I just started going on the scale twice a month, every other two weeks. Every other two weeks because I didn't want to feel like my efforts were for naught. I needed to keep going without a reminder or some number judging me. You don't have to do that to yourself. In my opinion, if you are doing what you're supposed to do, you feel healthy, you feel good, you look in the mirror and you like what you see, keep strong, carry on. Now in the beginning, in the beginning of the fasting journey, that's when you're going to experience, if you are doing this for weight loss, which most of us are, you're going to experience the most weight loss within your first month, okay? Your body is now in a severe calorie deficit, which essentially fasting is a calorie deficit. Okay. You're going to 
erase all that mental motivation just that quick, just that quick. So do yourself a favor, if you can, every week, okay? If you could really, oh my gosh, Lameek. <laughs> Lameek, don't weigh yourself. Oh my God, that is the worst thing to do, Lameek. Okay, let me tell you a story. It was April 2020. So in 2021, around like, you have to hide the scale, Lameek. Don't, don't do that to yourself. Um, in the summer of 2021, so I'm in the midst of my weight loss, and I happen to also be ending a relationship at that time. I had left the home we shared. And although it was like a derailment, the great thing about alternate day fasting is like, I didn't have to meal prep. I didn't have to have some special diet. I just didn't eat. Right. And then the days I could eat, I ate whatever. I pretty much ate whatever. If I wanted McDonald's, I hop all day. Fine. But then the day I was fasting, I didn't have to worry about anything. So I was still able to continue, even though I was removed from the home I shared with them, that person, and I moved to my mom's and I left behind the scale. I left behind the scale and it had been around five weeks that I, until I was able to weigh myself again. Five weeks I went without. And in my head, I am dying. I'm dying to get on the scale. Cause I'm like, I'm, I haven't weighed myself in so long. I'm keeping it up, but what's really happening. Do you know in five weeks? All right. Let me, let me quick math, quick, quick math. <laughs> okay. So in those five weeks, I lost 15 pounds when I finally got back on the scale and I was shocked, blown away. All right. So here's the thing. What sounds better? You five weeks passing you as you're living life, doing what you're supposed to do. And you get on the scale and you see a 15 pound drop. Or if you get on the scale every week, if I got on the scale every week that I um, was alternate day fasting and saw that I lost three pounds, three pounds, three pounds, three pounds, which, which looked better, that big 15 pound weight loss or a meager three, three pounds and all three pounds, three. I just want to let you know that three pounds a week is extremely aggressive, extremely aggressive. That's above and beyond the average just slow and steady weight loss is one pound a week. Okay, you do that, Lamique. <laughs> you hide it after you get to Wonderland. Wonderland is a beautiful place to be, so I'm rooting for you. Three, one pound a week is the average weight loss. And a lot of people, a lot of people are, I seen, see so much online. This goes back to microwave society. We want instant results. We want results now o'clock. We want results yesterday. That's not how good, steady weight loss goes. You're not promised weight loss, alternate day fasting, okay? But if you're doing what you're supposed to do, you are damn sure promised to feel better about yourself. You're gonna look better in your clothes. You're gonna lose fat. The stomach is gonna lean out. It's promised, I promise you. When you're going on the scale so often, sometimes what if during those one of those weeks I didn't lose anything and then the next week I lost four? I would have lost steam the week I weighed myself and lost nothing. I wouldn't have gone far enough to see me lose four the next week. You understand? You ever seen that? picture of a man, two men digging for diamonds. One keeps digging and then turns back and the other just keeps digging. And like a centimeter later, he hit diamonds. Don't be the top person giving up 
you're that close, keep going, but the scale could easily deter you because you think you're not progressing like you should. All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> Number two, it can be demotivating. If you don't see the results you were hoping for, it can be demotivating and make you feel like giving up. This can hinder your progress towards your weight loss goals. Okay? Three, weight can fluctuate. Your weight can fluctuate throughout the day due to factors like hydration levels, food intake, and exercise. Weighing yourself too often can lead to frustration when you see fluctuations, even if they're normal and expected. All right? So to expand on that, us, us women, we are too vulnerable to weight fluctuations. If you are on your period, if you are the week before your period, if you had a meal, if you had a salty dinner the night before, if you drank water, if you went to the bathroom, all these things affect the outcome on the scale by one to three pounds. So you could have been doing just fine. It's just that water, water has a way of being up and down. It is not fair to yourself because us as human beings, we are going to vary considerably from day to day, hour to hour, even minute to minute. What's standing on the scale is, is basically a moment in time. It's a moment in time. And it's just a snapshot of where you are in this part of your life. If you lost weight, great. The scale captured it. If you didn't pee for the morning, great. The scale captured it. If you gained weight, oh, great. The scale captured it. If it's within a three pound range, don't worry about it too much. All right. It's hard. It's hard not, not to worry about it because you want to always see the scale go down. But you know, and I know you're a smart cookie, you know, like I know, like everybody knows, progress, success is never linear. I'm going to say that again. Success is never linear. It'll never go, no, it does this, like the stock markets, all right? <laughs> you have to understand that it, you will never, it'll never happen. It'll never happen. It'll never happen. There always has to be highs and lows on the, that's why it's called a journey. Because there's highs and there's lows, there's pits, there's peaks. You are learning as you go. And every step of that is going to reflect what you've learned, what you choose to ignore, what you're progressing on, what you're failing at. That's why you're here. You're here to improve the mindset behind that. You guys already know the exercise and the diet and what to eat and what not to eat and how to fast. And it's about the mindset. Are you going to beat yourself up over something that is so human? I don't want you to do that. You know that it will never just be. Oops. So for you to weigh yourself too often, such as daily, I'm not calling any names. <laughs> It's, it's truly demotivating. The weight, weight fluctuates way too much, way too much to do this. The thing is, and I find that the problem is when we're overweighing ourselves, is essentially we're not trusting ourselves. 
Sit with that and tell me how that feels. How does that sound? We're not trusting ourselves. Because think about it. If you're at work, right, and your supervisor, your boss is micromanaging you, what is that read? That gives off a lack of trust. This manager does not trust you enough to get the job done. So they're always going to check in. They're always checking in. What are you doing? What are you? Hey, what's that? Trust yourself. You're doing well. You don't need to micromanage yourself. Stop micromanaging yourself with this man-made creation. Okay? It tells you data. Numbers are data. And it's not who you are. It's not who you, you're going to be. And it, it doesn't register who you are as an overall personality. It's, way, it's, it's, it's just data. Three numbers. Three numbers. Don't let three numbers dictate your happiness. Don't let three numbers dictate your day because people ruin their days with just one step on the scale. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair because you literally derail an entire week, two weeks of progress in two seconds. Two seconds. Um, four, number four. It's not an accurate measure of health. Your weight is just one aspect of your overall health. Focusing solely on your weight can cause you to overlook other important indicators of health, such as muscle mass, body fat percentage, and overall fitness level. Now, this is what I'm talking about. These are indicators, all right? These things can really be indicators of progress. And I'm going to get in, into more indicators of weight, non-scale victories during weight loss, but things such, such as measuring your muscle mass, which if you have a nice fancy, uh, body weight scale, like it can tell your water weight and muscle mass and your body fat percentage, although the body fat percentage wouldn't be wholly accurate. Um, you would have to do um, one of those dunk tests to get like a proper body fat percentage or even like those calipers that pinch the fat on your body. That's a better body fat percentage indicator. But heck, if you're able to do a, a few more reps or, God, where did my chat, there's my chat. If you're do, able to do a few more reps, go a little bit longer on the treadmill Play a little longer at the, the playground with your kids. What's the difference between 135 and 130? Does it really matter at that point? <laughs> and it's, I'm, I'm just laughing because it's like this number, this number, it's, it means so much and yet does so little. <laughs> it does... Because you hit the number and then what? Okay, you did it. Yay, goal. Now you have to stay there. Pressure. All right? How are you going to stay there? Are you going to stay there forever? Is there a range? Uh, what happens if you go under? What happens if you go over? Are you gonna, what, what does the number do for you? Stay in the range of it. Yes, this is a healthy weight range for you. Stay within it. That's great. But to just focus on the number, I need to hit this number. This is how I know I'm I'm good. It's it's not it's not healthy overall. But me being able to Bulgarian split squat seventy pounds, I like that. All right. Um, back to the the young lady that says she lost weight, but is gaining it as she gains more muscle mass. That's a thing. All right, a person, there could be two women at 180, right? One will look like 
a bag of potatoes. I, I don't like to shame women, but one could look like a bag of potatoes and one could look like a freaking Olympian goddess. All right. One has more lean muscle mass than the other. Both the same weight. And that's why I say the weight ain't it. All right, so let's get into what are better non-scale weight loss victories, okay? I love these instead of the scale. Progress photos. Progress photos. If you want to get off, off the scale, out of the numbers battle, start taking photos. I have been taking photos of myself for so long. <laughs> and although my previous efforts failed before I, came, I turned to alternate day fasting, although my previous efforts always failed, <laughs> I ne I always had the idea to have a start photo because I knew one day I would never give up until I found something that worked. I knew that about myself. I would I it was not my destiny to be fat like at all. I'm not built for that. I don't it don't even look right on me. I always had a start photo. And it's funny to look back at them because I was like, oh, this is when I started this. Oh, this is when I started this. Oh, that was slim fast. Oh, that was... But I have them. And looking back at them now, I'm able to have a before. Your today picture will always be your before. And then one day, you could take another picture and it'll be your after. Even if it was yesterday. That's your before. Today, you did what you needed to do. Here's another after. Build those progress photos up. If you want to take them daily, do that daily instead of <laughs> standing on the scale. Weekly was my thing. I loved, in, my, in the beginning of my alternate day fasting journey, I stood on the scale and I took one picture. And I put it on my, my fitness pal because they document weight loss. They have a whole graph and they have a progress photo. And I took photos. And I could see the progression, the leaning. Okay, although I didn't have major weight loss gains from week to week to week, I could see a curve coming in or a dimple being removed or another back roll like disappearing. Those things matter. And they're so minuscule that you looking in the mirror is not the best indicator. Sometimes you need a good side photo. So start taking photos if you are not already. Because one day you can be like me and be like, this is how I lost 89 pounds alternate day fasting. Da 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 da. Colleen taught me. <laughs> Next, clothing, waist beads. Clothing. What better indicator to denote your weight loss than clothing, especially like a dress, non-stretch jeans. A lot of people, although they don't like, they get on the scale and don't see the numbers down, they're like, but my pants are loose. I it's so weird. Yes, alternate day fasting loves to eat up fat reserves. That's how it, it exists once it goes through your glycogen stores. Once it eats up and goes through all the glucose and all of that, then it starts eating at the fat reserves, AKA the ketones. It runs on fat for fuel. It's the beauty of it. That's why I tell you, read, feast, fast, repeat, delay, don't deny, so you can understand the mechanics of why alternate day fasting works. You need to understand why this works so you could properly do it. You're going to lean out. You're going to, you're going to lose inches. It's going to happen. You're not always promised weight loss, but you will lean out. I had been the leanest when I was truly alternate day fasting. My muscle definition was popping. Okay. Waist cinching, 
legs lean. I felt like some, I felt like an Olympic, I really do feel like an athlete. Just everything that was underneath was just starting to stand out more. Okay. So if you have clothes, put it on one week, see how it fits. Is it tight? Is it loose? How's it going? Another one is waist beads. You can get waist beads from Etsy. They make beautiful African waist beads. Waist beads just go around your waist. The waist you have now, okay, so you measure yourself. You order the waist beads for your waist now. And as you lose weight, hopefully, the waist beads will start to drop. It'll get lower down your waist. And then when the waist, the waist, be- the waist beads are hitting your hips, you can't deny that you have lost weight because the waist beads don't stretch, okay? They're made specifically for the circumference that you ordered, okay? That's a beautiful indicator. Energy levels. How are your energy levels while losing weight, while alternate day fasting? If you feel like you are having poor energy, I want you to look into element electrolytes. I always preach about element. And if you're clean fasting, let me write that down inside the chat. Electrolytes. Um, If you are clean fasting, they also have the raw. It's called raw, where there's no sugar, there's no flavor. It is just sodium, magnesium, potassium, the three essential key components to keep you from fatigue, dizziness, headaches, hydrate you properly, like wholeheartedly into the cell membrane kind of hydration, not just like, oh, I'm quenched, hydrate, all right? Because it's, a lot of us aren't absorbing water like we should. Like I personally, I don't do well with just water. I need electrolytes. Gatorade, it's not the, it's not the best. So I, I promote element, but like I will choose Gatorade over water any day. It just hits different. Um, how are your energy levels? Do you feel just buoyant and jovial and Are you waking up with a little more spring in your step? Those are indicators that something here is taking place that is not just what the number says on the scale. I feel better. I feel like, hey, maybe I'll just do a matcha instead of a whole coffee. Maybe I'll just do a green juice. Those are the kind of progress indicators you want to look for. How are you feeling? You're waking up. Are you still groggy? If you're still groggy, you need more sleep. All right, but... That's something that a lot of people overlook. How do they feel energetically? I'm in my 30s. I know a lot of us are in our like 30s. My audience is like 28 to 30 up, okay? And we have lives. We have responsibilities. We have children. We are busy people. We got so much going on in our lives and not the most energy to do it. So whatever we can accumulate more, get more out of life, such as losing weight, such as hydrating properly, do so. It'll never kill you to have more energy. (laughs) Um, Along with that goes stamina. How long are you lasting? What's your endurance inside of the gym? Are you able to crank another set of... um, squats out? Are you able to run on the treadmill either a little faster, a better incline, uh, you know, less rest time? What is your stamina levels? Heck, listen, we grown adults. What's the stamina level inside the bedroom? All right. What, what are we doing? How are your energy levels? How's your endurance doing? Appetite. A progress indicator for alternate day fasting would be appetite. Now, this one is crucial because to me, alternate day fasting is almost like a reset button for me. I don't know about anyone else, but I hear a lot of people say, I am barely hungry anymore. I don't have as many cravings. 
I've decreased my binge eating. And mind you, this won't take place until well into your alternate day fasting journey. But also in conjunction, there's a hell of a plane coming over, in conjunction with healing your appetite, it's like the loudest plane in the world. In conjunction with healing your appetite, fixing your appetite, must come mental health therapy. Whatever therapy looks like for you, whether it's a medical professional, whether it's journaling, it's free, free 99. Journaling is free 99. Get your feelings out. Talk to yourself. Talk to a loved one, a trusted loved one. Emphasis on trust. Vent to someone. All of these are dealing with your emotions in ways that's healthy and not stuffing them or eating your feelings. So if your appetite is improving, as in it's decreasing, you don't need as much food to feel full and you're able to stop when you're full, like those are important indicators that what you're doing is working and you feel okay about your relationship with food at this point. Um, how you feel in the mirror. When you look inside the mirror, are you pleased? It's just that simple. Sometimes you can look in the mirror when you're not feeling your best and be like, eh, I'm not feeling it. I don't like how I look like this. And I don't look like how I look like that. That was my indicator. I looked in the mirror and I was like, uh-uh, this ain't it. And now I look in the mirror and I'm like, uh-huh, I'm feeling it. If you feel like you like what you see, you don't need a scale to tell to prove it to you. You do not need a scale to validate what you see in the mirror. Your scale should not be validating you. You should be validating yourself. Because say you go into the mirror and you look at yourself and you're like, damn, I'm sexy. Let's go see if the scale proves it. You step on the scale, the scale is like, eh, eh. you gain three pounds. You gain three pounds. Now what? Are you all of a sudden not feeling yourself again? All, all that sexiness you felt just melted away. What'd you say? ADF will give you those feelings, feeling yourself. The day after a fast and you wake up and you look in the mirror, tell me you're not a sexy beast. You need to tell, you need to tell me the day after a fast and you wake up before the coffee, before anything, before so you wake up and you look in the mirror and you're like, oh, Huh. Your your eyes are not deceiving you. I want you to know that what you're seeing it's real. You're not that's that's fat melting away. It's a bit of water weight removal as well. But you're actually leaning out. Guess what? Here's the thing about water weight. It you will always for any diet protocol, for any weight loss, you will always look the leanest in the morning. It just is what it is. You will always look the leanest in the morning. But some people, they wake up after, you know, a heavy sodium, a high sodium meal. You'll get puffy. You'll look puffy. If you wake up in the morning and you like what you see and you're lean and the waist is doing what the waist is supposed to do and, and you're liking that your collarbones and your cheekbones are, you're not wrong. Enjoy it. Don't ruin a good moment with the scale weigh-in. Run with it. Run with the happiness. Don't sabotage yourself. The scale is not there to validate you. Don't make a scale validate you, all right? Slimmer face. That was, that was my biggest thing. That was my biggest, and it's still my biggest thing. When I gain weight, I, I see it here, and I hate it. You let me know. But when you lose weight and your face starts slimming down, that's an indicator. If you're able to see the cheekbones popping, the jawlines coming through, 
All right. We're, we're going from round to oval. That's awesome. I love to see it. Okay. I love to see it because nothing to me. Yes. Fat is good. You need fat to look full and plump and youthful, but I also want my face to look snatched, <laughs> snatched. Okay. Because like the model us, like my mom and dad didn't give me these cheekbones for no reason. I'm not going to hide them with excess weight. So if you're, you're slimming down and you notice that these features that you didn't even know exist or you haven't seen in a long time are coming through, you're not wrong. You're, your eyes aren't fooling you. Look out for it. See your face. Take pictures of your face. If you're not ready to take pictures of your body, take pictures of your face. That's awesome too. And then like, look through it. Like, oh my goodness. Look at, I remember this girl. She, this used to be me in my teen years. I and mean, it's just fun to just watch the progress. Take photos, notice your face, notice your body. Um, and the last one, which is super duper, uber, uber, scooper important, which I find, I feel like everyone should do, definitely do before, during, and after their weight loss journey, okay? blood work. Take yourself to your physician. Get your labs done. You need to see your blood sugar, your cholesterol. You need to get your, your, your pressure taken. Okay. Get all the urine samples, get everything, get your, your levels for your A, B, C, D, E, F, G. All right. Make note of all these things. Day one, day 30, day 60. I don't think you get labs that often, but as often as you are eligible for a lab, get them. Because once again, these are progress indicators. This is your report card. You see how I circled right back? This is all about health and nothing Nothing. When I tell you nothing tastes as good, looks as good as a healthy bill, a bill of health. When I go to the doctor, I can't wait for my doctor to tell me I don't have to go on blood pressure meds. It's a great feeling. You can do it. I, you are going to do it. You're going, Lamique, in the name of Jesus, you will, you will get there because nothing feels as good as leaving the doctor's office knowing that you are healthy. You're healthy. The doctor is not concerned about your weight. The doctor is not concerned about prediabetes. The doctor is not concerned about your blood pressure levels. The doctor is just signing off on a clean bill of health. Get your blood work done compare it to last and always improve because that's what matters more. Yes, we want to look good. Yes, we want to feel good. Yes, we want to have confidence. You deserve all of those things. It'll make you glide through life, but none of it will matter. None of it will matter if you are dead sick and or tired. Okay. And that's, that is it. That, that's all. Overall, it's best to weigh yourself once a week or even less than that and focus on other indicators of health and progress, such as how you feel, your energy levels, how your clothes fit, or your strength and endurance. These are things that matter more than the three numbers your home scale has to offer. All right. So that's this live. I pray it was useful, beneficial, inspirational, and it did help a lot as far as overweighing yourself. It's self-sabotage. Don't do it. Don't do it. You're so welcome, Annie, Lamique, and Ankita. 
I appreciate you all for being here in this live. And for everybody else that is going to watch, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. I'm heading to bed. <laughs> and I will see you guys for next week's live. All right. Have a good one. Bye.